This is ProBlogger. Hey there and welcome to episode 220 of the ProBlogger podcast. My name is Darren Rouse and I'm the blogger behind ProBlogger.com, a blog, podcast, event, job board and a series of ebooks and soon to come some courses all designed to help you as a blogger to grow your blog and to make some money from it as well. You can learn more about ProBlogger at ProBlogger.com. And while I'm mentioning it, uh, sign up for our newsletter, ProBlogger Plus. You'll see calls to action to do that um, wherever you go on ProBlogger.com. And that will keep you in the loop in terms of our new content, but also some of the new things we've got coming for 2018. Now, in today's episode, I want to talk about email. And uh, it's a fairly introductory, I guess, the frequently asked questions that I get about email, particularly what should you include in the emails that you send? I think most bloggers know that they should be sending some emails um, and collecting email addresses, but I regularly get asked the question, you know, what should I put in my emails? And I want to talk today about what we do with our newsletters, talk about some of the questions we get around whether you should use plain text or rich text or HTML, how frequently you should send and uh, other types of emails that you might want to build into your sequence as well. So we're talking all things email today. If you haven't yet got a newsletter or an email list, today is going to be good for you because we'll also just mention some tools that you might want to use. And uh, if you have got one but you haven't been sending, this will be the perfect podcast for you, I hope. So let's get into it. Today's show notes are at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 220. Creating great content, finding an audience, building engagement, monetizing your blog. This is Pro Blogger. Do you email your blog readers regularly? Now, maybe you have had this on your to-do list, your someday list for a long time now. It's amazing how many bloggers I meet have got set up an email list or start sending emails as one of the items on their one-day list. Um, And I want to encourage you today, as we approach the end of 2017, move into a new year, to put this on your today list. I really want to encourage you to make this an essential item, a big part of what you do in 2018. Because as I look back over the years in my blogging, this is one of the most important things that I ever took action on, starting to send emails. Now, you might think email is dead or an old-fashioned medium um, and that you'd be better off building your connections through social media, which is certainly one way that you can build relationships with your readers and drive traffic to your blogs. But the truth is email is still one of the best, if not the best way to connect with your blog readers. Now, things are changing all the time in the space that we're operating in, but email is not going away. It hasn't gone away. It one day may go away, but I can't see it going away in 2018, 19, 20. And whilst all of these other um, options of communicating with your readers do come and go in terms of their effectiveness, email is still a very effective way to uh, reach your readers. And it's a big part of the strategy on both of my blogs. It drives a lot of traffic every week. It helps us to build community. We use our email to direct people to some of these social media accounts that we building community on to drive engagement. It helps us to understand who is reading our blog because we can get feedback from those who subscribe. And it helps us to monetize the business as well, both in terms of selling our products, but also directly monetizing the emails. And we um, actually sell advertising in some of the emails that we do, particularly on digital photography school. So it's paying for itself and uh, is a profitable part of our business. So if you're not doing email, please consider it and make it a priority for 2018 in in terms of starting that email list or making your email list more effective for you. Now, I do get a lot of questions about email and I want to cover some of the more common ones today because it can be used in a variety of ways and uh, there's no blueprint for how you should do it, but I want to explore some of the different methods that you can use to use a- email. And particularly, there's six questions that I want to talk about today. In fact, there's five and I want to give you some further listening for the sixth one. The first question is, what tool should I use? 
I get it all the time. I want to suggest to you a few tools that um, you might want to consider. Number two question is what content should I put in my emails? What are my options in terms of sending a newsletter um, particularly? Um, number three, what format should they be in? Um, should you be sending plain text emails, rich text, HTML, you know, pretty designed uh, emails? Question number four, how frequently should I send emails? Number five is what other types of emails should you send in addition to that newsletter that you do? And then the sixth question, I've got some further listening for you, is how to get more subscribers for your list. So I'm not going to cover that specifically, but I do have some further listening, which I'll mention at the end of today's show. So that's where we're headed today. You're listening to Pro Blogger. The first question, let's get into it. What tool should you use? Now, there are um, an amazing array of tools um, on the market today. You know, when I started doing email, I think it was back 2004, 2005, there weren't really that many tools, but today they there's so many. And every time I ask in our, in our Facebook group, you know, what tools do you use? It's amazing how many different tools are mentioned there. They come in all shapes and sizes with different levels of features and different price points. What I would encourage you to do is to pay for an email service. Don't use a free one. Um, don't send your newsletter from your Gmail account, it's just going to get you into trouble in terms of um, sort of spammy practices, and it's going to hurt your deliverability. You do want to invest in an email service provider, and it does cost, but if you use email right, it should pay for itself through selling products, through selling affiliate products, through um, potentially even having advertisers in your email. It's not that expensive to start out. Most of the tools that are out there have um, free entry points or they give you a trial for a certain amount of subscribers and then they uh, increase the price as you get more subscribers. So you shouldn't have to pay too much to get started. Now, this isn't the time or place to compare all the different options out there, but what I will say is over the last 12 months, we've looked at quite a few of the options at ProBlogger for our own use. Uh, For many years, I've been using Aweber as a tool, uh, and it is a solid option that I know many ProBlogger readers use. It's been around for years. It's reliable. It's relatively affordable. Um, But over the last few years, we've increasingly come up against challenges um, that are starting to hold us back in in terms of what we're trying to do with our email list. Some of the features aren't quite there in comparison to some of the other tools out there. You can do a lot, but you kind of have to hack it together and it's a little bit clumsy in terms of the way that it's arranged. But it is a good solid tool if you just want to send a newsletter every week and you don't want to get much more sophisticated than that. So we've decided to start looking around at some of the other options. It's been years that I've been using Aweber and uh, we've started to also notice a little bit of deliverability issues. And that could be partly because of the size of our list and because our list is quite old as well. We have a lot of people who signed up for that list in 2005, 2006. And so deliverability is kind of, there's some issues there for us as well. So when it came to looking at what we should switch our business to in terms of email, we considered a lot of different tools and we came down to two. And there are two that I would recommend for you. Um, The two that I would encourage you to consider, and I've got links to these on the Uh, our show notes are Drip and ConvertKit. We'll do an episode in 2018 with more detail on these tools and talk a little bit about the actual features of them. But we came down on Drip and we've decided to move Drip and we've we've actually switched ProBlogger over to Drip in the last six months and it has been amazing. We've loved using it. It's very powerful enables us to do a lot more sort of segmentation of our list and um, deliver different types of emails to different people to create different sorts of sequences of emails. Um, It's very powerful and it's incredibly intuitive to use. Um, It is more expensive for us than Aweber, but we're already seeing as a result of higher deliverability and more powerful tools that we're going to be able to make our money back on that. And we will be moving Digital Photography School over to Drip next year. And that's a big task for us because we've got so many lists and so many subscribers there. So Drip has been very good for us, but uh, ConvertKit, I would highly recommend that as well. It is um, a newer tool, perhaps hasn't matured as a platform quite as much as Drip and not quite as advanced in some of the tools. And so when we looked at the size of our list and some of the things we wanted to do, it wasn't quite there, ConvertKit for us, particularly when we made that decision, ConvertKit, you can do HTML emails. Um, That may be coming or it may have already come. Um, You had to do 
plain text. And I know for a lot of bloggers, plain text is totally fine. And we'll actually talk about why plain text might be the best option for you anyway. But we came down on Drip. But if you are um, perhaps not wanting to do something quite as sophisticated as Drip, and you want a tool that has been specifically designed for bloggers, ConvertKit is amazing. And uh, I would highly commend uh, that company to you as well. Both of the companies are brilliant in terms of their customer service. So um, do have a look at both of them. If you want to sign up for them, I'd appreciate it if you do it through our links on the show notes because they are affiliate links and we do earn a small commission on those things, help us to keep ProBlogger running. But uh, even if you don't check them out, I do highly commend them to you. Both are really good customer service as well. They've been very helpful for us. So they're the two tools that I would use. I know others of you are using other tools and really uh, most of the tools out there do have the same types of um, features. But again, if you haven't set up a list yet, do pay for one. Don't send your emails from your Gmail account. It's just going to get you into a lot of trouble. Creating great content and building your audience. This is ProBlogger. So question number one was tools. Number two is what content should I put in my emails and how should I format them, I guess, is the third question as well. And that's what I want to turn our attention to. Now, there are no rules for what you should send in a newsletter, but there is one thing I would strongly encourage you to consider, and that is to be consistent and to be regular. Be consistent. Email subscribers are like blog readers. They like consistency. And they quickly form expectations of what they're going to get from your list. They will sign up and they'll see your first email and they'll see your second email. And if they're um, similar to each other, they'll expect your third email is going to be like that. And so if you are storytelling in your emails and then you suddenly switch to an opinion piece and then you suddenly switch to tips and then you suddenly switch to promotional stuff and and you're mixing things up constantly, some of your readers are going to get frustrated with that. If you're using different voices in your um, newsletter, They'll begin to get a bit frustrated with that. We've actually found that our subscribers really like it when we do the same kind of thing every week. And I'll tell you what we do in ours as well. So there's a variety of things you can do in your newsletter, but try to keep some consistency there in terms of how it looks, how it reads, and I guess the benefits of it as well. They're much more likely to stay subscribed and to stay engaged with your list, keep opening your list, keep looking for your emails if you have some consistency there in terms of what they get and also when they get it. Um, So don't stray too far from normal. You can mix things up a little bit. Always try to keep some consistency there, particularly in the way it looks, I think, uh, is really important. So there's a variety of things you can do with that newsletter. Um, And what I want to do is just give you three different options. You, You could also probably do a combination of these things or something else as well. Again, consistency is key. But these are the three most common things that I see newsletters doing. And each has has their own strength. So the first thing you could do is to write exclusive content, especially for the newsletter list. And I see some bloggers doing this very effectively. They um, send a weekly or maybe every second week or even a monthly type of email. And you open the email and it's an article in the email. There's actually a tip or there's some news or there's a story in the email itself. You don't have to click on anything to go and read the content. They actually put the content in the email. It's something exclusive and valuable just for the subscribers. It's almost like they've written an extra blog post that week just for the email. Now, there's lots of bloggers who do this. I've used um, the example of Nicole Avery, who um, is one of our subject matter experts on ProBlogger. She's written a lot of articles for us. She's got a um, blog called uh, Planning with Kids, and she does this in her newsletter. If you um, subscribe to it, um, you'll see that she's essentially writing an extra article or blog post every week just for subscribers. You can't get it anywhere else. And this approach works really well because it helps your readers, uh, sorry, your subscribers to feel a little bit special. You're giving them a reason to stay subscribed because they can't get this valuable content anywhere else. Your your emails have the value inside them. So they actually begin to look for them and um, begin to expect them and they they open them. They don't say, oh, this is all just stuff in the blog. This is something I can't get anywhere else. And so they get into the habit of opening those emails. And that's a really powerful thing. The downside of this approach is you have to write something extra every week. And it um, is going to go to a smaller audience than potentially your blog. You write a blog article 
and it's there for all time and it gets indexed by Google and it gets shared by social media for all time and so it can get a lot more eyeballs on it. So it feels like you're doing a lot of work for less effort, but the work that it's doing with your subscribers can be very powerful because it can build a deep connection with them. It can make them very thankful for it um, and it gets them in the habit of looking for your emails because they know they can't get it anywhere else. So that's option number one is you create something exclusive for your your newsletter list. Type two of what you could send in terms of a newsletter is where you send out your blog posts by email. And this is where you essentially every time you uh, publish a blog post, um, you send an email sending people to that blog post or um, you actually email the blog post itself. So there's a couple of different options within this one. And this is something that's possibly a little bit easier to do because you're not writing extra content for your newsletter. Um, you're just promoting that content or you're you're putting that, repurposing that content for your newsletter as well. So if you're shorter on time, this is a good way to go. An example of this is John Morrow. Uh, John has a blog called Smart Blogger and he argues really strongly for this type of newsletter. Uh, if you sign up for his his newsletter, um, you'll get an email anytime he publishes a new blog post, and the email generally has two or three paragraphs that introduce the topic and then links to where you can read it. Sometimes he might have the first paragraph or two of the blog post and then says further reading or read the rest here. Um, sometimes he will rewrite that introduction and, and give you a good reason to go and read that article. Um, so he's sending out these um, uh, emails every time he does a new blog post. Now, this works for John because he's not publishing every day. Um, sometimes I think he publishes two or three times a month. So it's less regular. And so he's not interrupting his subscribers constantly. Um, and it's probably not recommended if you publish every day or several times a day. I think um, on Digital Photography at School, our readers would get highly annoyed if we emailed them every time we did a blog post because we publish 14 a week. So this approach is good for those of you who are short on time. Um, and it's all about delivering traffic to your blog. The emails themselves don't deliver a lot of value in the email. And so it's not as good in terms of getting people used to the idea of opening the emails because there's that little voice in the back of their head saying, oh, well, I could read this on the blog. I don't need to read this email. And, and you're giving them perhaps a little less reason to do it. But if the content is valuable on your blog and you're only doing one a month or one a week, um, it's possibly um, something that will work for you. And another approach that I have seen on this is where the bloggers actually put the whole blog post in the email. So they might publish the blog post on their blog, but then they'll also send that whole blog post in an article format in the email itself. And so this is where you do build some value in the emails themselves. Now, this means your subscriber doesn't visit your blog as often, but for some of us, that doesn't matter. You know, if you're monetizing your blog with advertisers, you do want to get them over to your blog. And so that teasing them with that first paragraph or two and then saying, read the rest here, that's definitely a good way to go. But if you are just about trying to build credibility, authority, um, you're trying to make your readers um, connected to you, then it probably doesn't matter where they read your content. And so this is an option that if that is your goal, if you want to monetize your blog less directly by selling a product to them, um, th then you maybe you just want to deliver that email, uh, that content in the email itself. So there's a couple options there. The last type of email that you might want to send is what I do. Um, and that is where you do a digest type email. Um, and so you might send a weekly or a monthly digest of what you've published in that last period on your blog. Uh, you might want to um, send links to all of the new content you've published or just the highlights um, of what you published in that, um, that period of time. Generally, people are doing this weekly or monthly, um, but you could do it any sort of period as well. You could do it every second week. So if you're publishing several posts a week like we do, you don't want to be emailing your readers every time an email, uh, a new post goes up um, or else people will unsubscribe. Um, but th this is really where you digest it all. Um, so Digital Photography School is a good example of this every Thursday, I sit down and I look at the 14 posts that we've published over the last week and I arrange them into categories and then I 
plug them into a template that we have had designed for us. It's a HTML template, and uh, it's basically um, a, a digest of the week. And so basically, if you open that email, and I can put a screenshot in um, today's show notes, you'll see sometimes we put a little introduction of something that's happened during the week or highlighting a promotion that we've got on. And then the email is essentially a list of our new posts. So there'll be 14 new posts there. We also have some messaging from advertisers there. If we're promoting something of our own, uh, have a, a promotion going, we will highlight that as well. But it's generally a digest of all the stuff that's going on in the blog. Occasionally, we'll also link to our Facebook page or our Facebook group and promote the community that's going on as well. ProBlogger Plus newsletter is similar, although simpler. We only publish three posts a week usually on ProBlogger, one blog post, one uh, podcast, and one Facebook Live or live um, or video on Facebook. And so a ProBlogger Plus newsletter is only got the three links. Occasionally, I'll also highlight um, a post in our archives that um, I think is relevant uh, still today. And I usually would uh, include an introduction in the ProBlogger one because I'm trying to build a connection with readers as well. I want to give people an insight into what's going on at ProBlogger headquarters or uh, something that has been going on on the blog over the last week. And so um, these digest type emails are good for those of you who do have a lot of content. Um, and they're also really good if you are trying to drive traffic to your site. You want to get people across to your site. Um, you're highlighting all the blog posts, but you're not annoying your readers um, if you're publishing a lot of content. Use an introduction. I would encourage you to do that as well because that's where you can build the the more personal connection with your readers as well. How to build and monetize your blog. This is ProBlogger. So... Um, three different types of newsletters that you can do. Um, The third question I want to briefly cover is what format should they be in? I get this question all the time. Should you be sending your emails in plain text, um, uh, rich text, which I'll explain in a moment, or HTML? Now, on our blogs, um, and if you get the ProBlogger Plus newsletter, you'll know it's it's kind of branded with ProBlogger. You see the logo in it. It's a fairly simple design, but it is HTML. There's a picture of me in it. Um, there's color. There's, um, you know, the ProBlogger colors. There's a ProBlogger logo. Um, and this, hopefully, makes it a little bit more visually appealing, but it also reinforces the brand. And it personalizes it as well because it's got my face in it. Now, we do the same thing with Digital Photography School as well. We have the DPS color. Uh, we've uh, arranged it into categories. Uh, particularly on DPS, it's useful to go HTML because we've got a lot of content in there. There's 14 links. There's messages from the newsletter uh, from our advertisers as well. And so we want to, um, you know, draw the eye to different parts of it as well. And so HTML is really good if you've got a lot going on in your emails as well. Now. That costs us. We actually had to pay to get those designs done. Our developers did it, so we paid them to do that. It does take a little bit of time to get our emails together each week. It's not just a matter of sitting down and writing a a few paragraphs. Um, I actually have to sit there and plug it into the um, template to test all the design to make sure it's all working. Um, And so it's a little bit more involved in terms of putting it together, but I do think it reinforces our brand. Plain text is another option, and I see a lot of blog is doing it. In fact, and I think there's some really good reasons for just doing plain text emails as well. Firstly, you know, it's cheaper. You don't have to get anyone to design it. It's quicker and easier to put together. Um, I, I generally takes me... Uh, 45 minutes or so to put our um, newsletters together each week, a little less for ProBlogger, uh, but a plain text email would be a lot quicker than that, at least half that sort of time, um, not including whatever you're writing. Sometimes the writing itself could take more. So the plain text email would be a lot quicker. Um, and also the deliverability of a plain text email could be better than a HTML one. And we've certainly seen that when we do our promotional emails, when we promote with a HTML email, our deliverability suffers. And so we generally do our sales type emails in plain text. Um, And so you might want to test that plain text versus HTML. And every time we've done a split test on that in terms of our sales emails, uh, we said plain text winning. The other option is what's called rich text. And this is where you use some formatting. So you, um, you might use bold or italics, or you make uh, any links, um, you link a word rather than putting the full link. This makes your emails look a little bit neater. 
um, means you can draw the eye. You can sort of um, use bold to create sort of headings and um, can be more useful if you've got slightly longer emails as well to draw the eye down uh, the page. So they're your three main options. Um, I would encourage you if you're just starting out uh, and you're feeling challenged by it all um, and you, you're you know sort of teetering on the edge of should I get into email or not, start with plain text. It's so much simpler to do. At least you'll be sending something every week. You want to get into the rhythm of sending that. You can always progress to HTML later, but start simple. You're listening to Pro Blogger. Fourth question, really brief answer to this one is how frequent should I be sending the emails? Again, there's no right answer here except to say regularity is so important. Your readers will get used to the rhythm that you choose, so stick to it. Um, Personally, I really like uh, weekly emails because it becomes a part of people's week. Um, It also leaves enough space between the emails that you can also send them extra emails, uh, and I'll talk about some of those in a moment. And also, it, um, it's not so far apart that it gets um, they forget who you are. And that's the danger of going monthly is that if you go monthly, someone will sign up for your newsletter today. They may not hear from you for um, 29 days if they sign up um, on the first of the month and you send your emails on the last of the month. And so that distance between emails, there's a danger there that they don't feel connected to you, that they forget they even subscribe to you. So I like weekly because it is a little bit more regular than that. It um, keeps you in front of people at the top of their mind. But ultimately, the frequency you choose really needs to depend upon, one, how much time do you have? If you don't have much time, less frequent is okay. The format that you're trying to send emails in, if you're doing um, HTML, could take a little longer, so maybe less frequent. If you're doing plain text, it's a little bit easier to do, so maybe more frequent. Um, What are you putting in your emails? Are they long? Are you writing exclusive content for them? Um, Then um, less frequent might be okay because, you one, it's going to take you longer to create those emails, but two, it's going to take longer to read. So you don't want to be sending really long articles every day to your readers um, because, again, they can't consume that much content. So less frequent might be okay if, if the content is really deep content. And I guess ultimately, what are your readers' expectations and what's their ability to consume the content as well? So there's some of the questions I would be asking. Again, I think weekly is probably a good start starting point. Um, You can always um, decrease or increase it slowly over time, but don't chop and change too much. Okay, fifth question, and it's really the last question, is what other types of emails should you consider sending as well? Um, Now, we send out our weekly newsletters, but in between the weekly newsletters, um, some weeks there's another email. Sometimes there's even two, and there's different types of emails that we add into the sequence of emails that we send. Um, And these emails might include, um, well, let's go through three types, promotional emails. And this is where we launch a new product um, or run a sale on an existing product or doing an affiliate promotion of some kind Um, or um, a sponsored type campaign as well. So if you've got a sponsor, sometimes you um, might send an email out about that campaign or about that offer as well. Now, emails for us, result in most of our sales. And so this is a really important type of email for us, but we don't want to go overboard with the promotional emails as well. And we know that if we promote you know, something new every three days, our readers are going to push back and they're going to, they're going to get mad. So we really um, try to be as careful as possible. We want to be um, promoting enough that we are profitable, but we don't want to promote so much that we lose all our subscribers. And so you be, you've got to, we've got to play this a little bit by ear. One key for us is that we map out at the start of the year what promotions we're going to run over the next year. So we are at the at present kind of mapping out 2018. Um, what eBooks and courses are we going to launch? Um, which ones um, have we that we've already launched? Will we do relaunches of or or promotions on? What seasonal promotions are we going to do? Uh, in 2018, are we going to do Black Friday? Are we going to do a Christmas sale? And what affiliate promotions are we going to do? And so um, the beauty of mapping it out ahead of time is that you can space things out. We typically run a promotion for a week or even two weeks, and we know that during those times, we're going to be sending out multiple emails in addition to our newsletter. 
we want to space those out. We, we don't want to run a promotion this week and then another promotion next week and then another promotion the week after. We want to space them out, um, give our readers a bit of a break in between. So that's another type of email that you could build in. Um, an autoresponder sequence would be another um, option. Um, these can be really great way to bring your um, new subscribers up to speed with some of the the other stuff that you've got in your archives. You know, uh, if someone subscribes to Digital Photography School today, they've missed out on over 7,000 articles in our archives. And so what we've created is a sequence of emails that goes out automatically to anyone who subscribes to our newsletter. Every 30 or so days, they get an extra email. And it's um, time to go out on a Sunday. Um, our newsletters always go out on a Thursday. Our promotional emails usually go out on a Tuesday. So we've kind of got this, this um, rhythm that you always will get a Thursday email newsletter. Um, you'll you sometimes get a Tuesday promotional email, and this is um, maybe one in three weeks. And then one in four weeks, you'll get a Sunday email that is uh, highlighting something in our archives. So an autoresponder is where you set up that sequence of emails ahead of time, and uh, you just let it run to anyone new who subscribes up. Um, there is a whole episode of this podcast dedicated to autoresponders that I've done in episode 70. I'll link to that in the show notes, but you might want to also go back and listen to that. And it's a very powerful strategy to use because it's a set and forget type thing. You do it once, you you set up that email once, and then for all eternity <laughs> or until you stop, I choose to stop sending that particular email, that email will automatically go out to all new subscribers at the set intervals. Very powerful strategy. The third type of email that you might want to send as well is more of an um, interaction type of email. And this is where you um, send out a question to your readers and encourage them to reply. Now, this might seem a little bit um, crazy. You don't want all your, your subscribers sending you emails, but it's a very powerful thing to do. When you send out, for example, you might send out a welcome email, and then at the end of that welcome email say, please tell us about your experience with... Um, and that is a very powerful thing because it signals to your subscribers that you're interested in hearing from them. Now, that adds work to you because you're going to start getting more emails, but it's going to give you incredible insight into your um, subscribers, and it's going to make them realize that you are not just wanting to send them emails, you're wanting to have a conversation with them. Another option that may be uh, a little less work is where you set up a an email, and it might be part of that autoresponder sequence that we just talked about, where you send out um, uh, an invitation to complete a survey. And this is uh, uh, something we do on Digital Photography School after you've been subscribed to um, our newsletter there for, I think it's three months, we have an email that goes out automatically on the autoresponder sequence that says, hey, could you take five minutes to do this survey? And the survey has questions about their demographics, but also asks them questions about their photography and gives them an opportunity to ask questions as well um, about photography that they've got, which gives us ideas for content. So these types of emails are not so much about driving traffic to your archives. They're not designed to get sales. They're designed to help you understand who your readers are and also to make them feel uh, a little bit more connected to you. Another option that you might want to do is um, add in the occasional email that promotes your Facebook group, your Facebook page, your Instagram account, these type of places as well. And again, this is about engagement, trying to get a second point of connection with your um, subscribers. So there's the three types of extra emails that you might want to send. There would be others as well. And if you've got any others that you send out that you've built into your um, kind of uh, rhythm of sending emails, I'd love to hear about them over in the Facebook group. This is ProBlogger. So the last question that I get asked all the time from people is, how do I get more subscribers to my newsletter? Um, now, I'm not going to cover this today in this um, episode, but I do recommend you go and listen to two episodes, uh, episode 68 and episode 69. These are two different sort of strategies for building your subscriber numbers of your newsletter. And uh, I think both of those would be well worth listening to once you finish this one in a couple of minutes. So the last thing I want to say is to make it a priority. Make email a priority for 2018. Uh, send something. You know, the two big problems I see amongst so many bloggers are bloggers who don't have email lists 
that's the number one problem. Um, or they've signed up for a, a service and they um, aren't collecting email addresses. And the second big problem is bloggers who don't send emails. I see this all the time. People um, who are collecting emails every day, they're getting new subscribers, but they're not sending emails. And if you fall into either of those um, categories, one, know that you're not alone, but two, know that I'm not satisfied until you get that thing uh, fixed. And I want you to make it a priority in 2018. I, I really have seen the way that email has transformed my business. Um, it has really brought a lot of traffic um, and a lot of income and a lot of connection um, with our readers as well over the years, and it is a central part of what we do. And so really put some priorities into that. And even if you've got an email list and you're still listening, make it a priority to really take a critical look at what you're doing with your email. Do you need to change up your newsletter? Do you need to start an autoresponder sequence? Do you need to think about the design of your email? Do you need to test um, the format, you know, plain text versus HTML? Do you need to do some testing uh, um, in terms of the subject lines that you use? Do you need to consider upgrading your email service provider? Um, I highly encourage you to take a critical look on some of that type of stuff. Um, The last thing I'll say is if you haven't started, start simple. Even if you just send a monthly plain text email, (laughs) once a month, a plain text email with three paragraphs um, that simply links to um, a recent post that did well for you, um, that is better than nothing. Don't let the tools, don't let the formatting, don't let the length, don't let the content itself hold you back. Send something and make it valuable. It doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to be profound, but just make it deliver a little bit of value to your subscribers and they will keep looking for your emails and it will begin to build some momentum for you. Can't wait to see what happens as a result of this. Um, Remember to start simple and then let it evolve from there. You can always get more complicated with your emails, um, but uh, you you really need to make a start on it. Today's show notes where there are links to Drip and Convert Kit, and there's uh, a bit of a summary uh, through a transcript of all the things that I've said and um, uh, some further reading for you as well, further listening. Uh, You can find that all over at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash two two. Oh, and uh, it's kind of the end of the year, and I do want to um, add my season's greetings uh, to those of you who are celebrating at the moment and those of you who are seeing in the new year. Um, I hope it's been a good year for you. We're moving now into a bit of a series of podcasts where you're going to hear some other voices. Um, I'm going to introduce them, but as I said in last week's um, podcast, we wanted to hear some of your stories, and we've had some amazing stories submitted, and so I'm really looking forward to introducing them to you in the coming weeks uh, over the end of the year, and uh, as we move into next year where we're going to start a um, a series of um, content on starting a blog, and so I really am looking forward to that. And those of you who haven't started a blog yet, uh, this is going to be a great time for you. And those of you who want to start a second blog, this is a great time for you to do that as well because we're going to give you some great content that's going to help you to do that. It's free. Um, and we're also going to help to celebrate some of those new blogs that are started. So uh, make January a time of starting a new blog. Look forward to introducing that whole concept to you more next week on the ProBlogger podcast. You've been listening to ProBlogger. If you'd like to comment on any of today's topics or subscribe to the series, find us at problogger.com forward slash podcast. Tweet us at problogger. Find us at facebook.com forward slash problogger or search problogger on iTunes. If you are looking for something else to listen to, I do recommend you go back and listen to episodes 68, 69, and 70. 68, 69 are about how to get more subscribers for that email list that we've just been talking about, and episode 70 was all about autoresponders. You should be able to find them all over in iTunes, uh, where I hope you're all subscribed and have left some nice reviews for us, and uh, or over on the um, show notes areas at problogger.com forward slash podcast, and then you just put the number 68 or 69 or 70. Thanks for listening. Chat with you next week.
Before I go, I want to give a big shout out and say thank you to Craig Hewitt and the team at Podcast Motor, who've been editing all of our podcasts for some time now. Podcast Motor have a great range of services for podcasters at all levels. They can help you to set up your podcast, but also offer a couple of excellent services to help you to edit your shows and get them up with great show notes. Check them out at podcastmotor.com.